just wanted to do a really quick video on the servo testers. Servo testers, I don't think a lot, enough people have them and it is really an essential tool. Um, I have quite a few, I really like them. Uh, this is the, the first one, this is the one that you can get for like a couple of dollars uh, on eBay. Um, without the aluminium case, it's just in like a little plastic wraparound case, but it's the exact same unit. Um, it's basically got a select button to select the mode, and it's got either manual where the dial just sets the servo position, uh, neutral, which is uh, supposedly a 1500 millisecond pulse to center a servo, and auto, which does a sweep. If I just plug in a servo, you can see what this does. Um, so this one has got three servo outputs, so you can plug three servos in at once, uh, or three of anything. Um, they mostly have that, so if I plug that in, so that's in manual mode first. So if I hold the servo there, you can see as I turn the dial, that just changes the servo position. Uh, neutral mode, it just pushes the servo to centre, and in auto it does a sweep. So you can... If you get a new set of servos, what I've often done is I've plugged three servos in and just turned them on and just left them running for five or six minutes just to give them some an exercise. Check they don't get hot. Um, check they uh, move smoothly. And the other thing I do with a new servo also is I just turn it and stop and check that it stops at each position. I've had uh, where where servos have pop problems that they will tend to drift. Um, so you can tell straight away it's a bad servo and not waste any time on it. Um, it also means if you've got a servo that's got a fault, like a short or something, um, you're very unlikely to do any harm to it. I use a like a four cell NIM pack to test them with, which is quite low voltage and low current. Um, if you plug this into your uh, into a model, you could blow up the back and the speed controller if it's a dead short in the in the or a faulty motor. So it's good to avoid that as well. Um, so that's how I do that. Um, the other thing I test with them is speed controllers. Um, this is a this is a different servo tester. This is a, a slightly posher one, which has got the display of uh, pulse width as you turn the dial. So you can uh, pot if I put this on here. This is a um, multi-star speed controller that I've just flashed with Simon K firmware. So I just want to test it. And this is just a motor I had lying around and a and a pack. So if I plug it in. Uh, you can see that's uh, 800 milliamps, that's an idle pulse, and the speed controller is just initialized. And now if I turn the dial, how can I do this? If I turn that up, the motor is spinning, and you can rev it up and down, and see up to 2200, which is a high pulse, 1500 is sort of mid, and turn it off. And it's a really good way to test a speed controller. Um, the other thing you can do with it is actually calibrate your speed controllers which again is a really nice thing to do you can do it with that by guessing or uh, if you look at the um, this is the this is the Ternigy this is quite a deluxe uh, tester um, which does quite a few clever things one of the clever things it does is it um, measure pulse width right if I plug in the uh, this is the the first servo tester plug it into the um, Ternigy and it reads out, I don't know if you can see the screen there, but that bottom pulse width is 973 and then the top is 1981. So I can then see where I am and if I go to center, that's 1491 milliseconds, which is pretty close to 1500. And if I do the sweep, I can see it rolling from, uh, it goes from just under a thousand to just over, just under 2000 milliamps. Um, milliseconds, sorry, um, which is uh, yeah, which is the range. So that that's a really useful tool. I've used this to um, check the output from a, a receiver or from a, f a flight controller for a quad. Um, so it's nice for that. This also does all the other um, sweep modes. So you can um, plug a servo in, that'll fire up, and you can go to uh, digital to select servo mode. And then you've got various modes. If I plug the servo back in, you can see. It's got a linear mode where you can set the, you can just give a pulse from 2000 to 1000 to 2000. I've also used this for calibrating speed controllers if I want to calibrate them 2000 to 1000, which is the standard calibration. If you use a NASA controller, you can't calibrate the speed controllers from the controller like you can with a, KT, a KK2. So it's really useful to be able to do that. Um, the other features it's got, quite a few, but one of them is a speed test where you will. Uh, it will run the servo and by measuring when the current draw stops it can time it so this servo is a 0.083 for 60 milliseconds and you can repeat that 
and it's giving 0 0.079, 0 0.080, so it's pretty consistent. So that is a really nice way to just check that the servo you bought is, is what you thought you paid for. Um, I've tested a few servos with this and they're all pretty much exactly what the uh, the specs came out at. So, But anyway, um, the this is another cheap one. This is sort of a halfway between the, the very cheap type and the, uh, the the one with the display. So this has also got a, uh, a, a readout of the pulse width it's sending. So if I put that on there... It only shows you the first um, uh, the first three digits, so that's 700 milliseconds, and it goes up to 2,300 milliseconds. And again, you could use that to uh, to, to to program a speed control if you're careful. Um, it's also got a button that will do a sweep, so that is now going from 800 milliseconds to 2,200 milliseconds as a, a servo test. So again, if I plug that servo in, you can see signal so up. So that's just doing a sweep there which again is really useful, just a way to have to test things. And again, this one's got four outputs, so you can test four servos at once. So yeah, the, you can get them for all different prices, but um, I would just recommend everyone should have one. So that's my quick tip.